Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Um, I know I have been failing a little bit, I haven't been posting lately. Um, I want to say sorry about that, I couldn't, um, I had to do a big pause for some personal reasons. But yeah, I want to try to, to be more active and to provide you more videos. And I saw that um, in the comments that I have been receiving, which I also want to thank you, you are amazing. And you, you have reached my heart very quick. And I saw in the videos that uh, you are facing some issues with JDT LS. And to be honest, I have been developing with Java lately. But now I've just decided to have a look with all of the comments that you made and to see how was the plugin working. And I saw that in my side was not working as well. And then I went to the documentation and I saw that a lot of things changed in there. And for the good, actually, I'm really grateful that they changed it. So yeah, I'm gonna be updating um, that uh, video so that you can see. In this video, I will start from the point that uh, I will assume that you already have some knowledge in plugin managers like Packer or something like that. And you have some kind of knowledge in Mason. You can also do it manually and, and download the JDT as we will see manually. But yeah, if you have some issues uh, understanding how the my config has being structured and how the config, I saw in some comments as well that you guys have some problems understanding how the config works and the structure and all of that stuff. Just let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video where I go deeply on that. And yeah, let's start uh, the video with some slides. As, al as always, I like to, to bring some slides. So the first thing is to set up a new event plugin manager. Uh, I use Lazy as my personal preference. I've already tested out Parker and Plug. For me, Lazy is the best one right now, but it's like kind of a personal preference, actually. The, they all work great. I've already used all of them. Choose whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Um, and yeah, for me, it's Lazy. Here is the, the, the documentation in the repository. Uh, you have here, Lazy also has a good thing which can manage itself, so you don't need to install it manually, it will manage itself. And yeah, you can pass a list, a, a table of, of plugins that you want to use, a string where you'll say which model will contain all of the plugins and all of that. Yeah, it's kind of advanced, let me know in the, um, in the comments if you would like me to explain to you how you would set up and all of that and how you would um, configure the plugins and all of that. Then we need to download the JDT LES, the language server. For that, you can go come to the repository as well of the Eclipse team, which are the ones that are the maintainers of the JDT LES. And then in there, you have the milestones and I have them open in here. You can choose the last one. In this case, don't look at the last one because this is not very well ordered. So the last one is 1.28.8. You go to this folder and then you download and you start it. This is a tar.gz, so it's, it's compressed. So you just only need to extract it. But there's also a better way, which is the way I use, which is using Mason. So Mason, it's kind of similar with Lazy, but instead of uh, managing plugins, it manages LSPs, formatters, and linters. I use this a lot to manage all of my LSPs, and previously I was also formatting formatters. I was also managing formatters and linters, but uh, the new LS plugin, it's archived, so it's not, um, it will not have any more updates. So I have to change and I'm still trying to figure out what will be the best option. But yeah, again, Mason, if you want me to do a video where I go deeply in Mason and all you would uh, install it and configure and all of that stuff. Uh, also the documentation, it's really straightforward. This is really easy to, 
to install as you can see Packer lazy and vim plug it's it was i've already used all of them just choose one i have lazy.nvim and i can show you um that so if i come to my modules to the lsp um these should be installed here so I've, you need to install mason and mason lsp config mason is kind of like kind of a market like kind of where you will have all of the um, the lsps and all of that stuff and mason lsp config it's kind of cool because it allows you and i can show you actually it allows you to tell to tell to the mason what are the um, the the servers that you want mason to install in this case i have a uh, ts server uh, previously i had more lua ls ts server jdt ls angular ls Pasha ls and way more but now they also have this automatic installation and what it does mean is that if lsp server uh, the lsp config it's loading it's trying to loading uh, lsp and it doesn't exist mason will immediately recognize that that lsp is missing and it will install automatically so you don't need to tell manually which one you want to install and all of that mason can handle that automatically then you need to install the java jdk i will assume that you already have because you might be already a java developer but if you are learning you also have the oracle where you can uh, download and install the team the jdt ls plugin that we are going to use uh, says that it's better to use a JD jdk 17 i haven't tested with the jdk 21 but i assume that it's also working but yeah just install the jdk 17 and then we need to install the nvim jdt ls plugin now this plugin it's different than the alias the language server will provide you with uh, what the NeoVim LSP needs in order to give you suggestions, auto completion, auto suggestions, uh, code actions, uh, diagnostics, all of that stuff. And this plugin, it's a superset, so it will link the JDT LES uh, language server to the NeoVim LSP config, and it will have even more functionality. And I have it here yeah and vim jdt ls this guy is really amazing it's like he has been really important in the community he's been doing a lot of great stuff for the community but here you see like some of the things that uh, it has more that jdt language server doesn't have which is kind of organized imports extract variables extract constants extract methods the list is big and is always always adding new stuff so yeah, you need to add it, this one you will add it to the lazy or to your package manager and not to the, um, to the Mason. Then you are going to need to create a java.lua file in FT, FT plugin. So I saw a lot of you guys, uh, a couple of you in the comments of the last JDTLS video asking uh, where uh, you find the installation of the FT plugin. So basically the FT plugin, you don't install it. It's like kind of a folder that you create inside of your config folder structure. So you have the plugin, you have the after. Um, again, if you want to know a little bit more how the structure is and how you can uh, create your own config and all of that stuff. And if you want me to go deeply, uh, just let me know in the comments. So I, will I will be more than happy to also create a video about that. But you have the FT plugin, and what it does mean is that, as you can see, I have text.lua, markdown.lua, and java.lua. So whenever you open a file, it will have an extension. And in Java, the extension will be .java. And what happens in here is that when you create a file inside of this folder, that is called, in this case, java.lua, every time that you open, and this is a Vim specific, it's not a new Vim specific, every time that you open a file that is a java file it will automatically load this file this java.lua file and this is like kind of settings that will load every time that you open um, 
uh, Java file with Vim or NeoVim or whatever. In this case, Java.lua will only work in NeoVim if you will be in Vim world will be in Java.vim. And then after installing, you can copy this. So this, as you can see, is a bit different than the last video. It's way more clean. It's way more easier. If you want, you can also do exactly in the same way as you, I've done in the last video, which was a nightmare if I can tell. But yeah, Every, the only thing that you need to change in all of that, it's this one, the path. So I know that in here they don't have the this vim.fn.xpen. Here they only have the path to JDT alias. But I had to do this. I had an issue with this and the community was were really amazing and they helped me to figure it out. So every time that you have tilde forward slash, it most of the times it doesn't recognize what is tilde forward slash. So you need to use this in order for it to convert this URL to an actual URL that um, NeoVim will understand it. So will be kind of home forward slash your username forward slash blah, 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 blah. So in this case, I have pointed out to uh, home forward slash dot local forward slash share forward slash envim forward slash Mason. And look, Mason is here. What does it mean? When I installed JDTLS, as you can see in here, I have it already installed. Every, every time that I update or install this package, it will Mason will put the files inside of this folder that you see. And then if you go forward slash bin forward slash JDTLS, you'll find um, the, the language server that you need in order for this plugin to work. And I have here an example of how you can do it if you would download from the milestones. So this is how you will do. In this case, I, I have downloaded the 1.9. This is kind of a old version. But yeah, as you can see, it's also forward slash bin, forward slash editls, and Mason does the same thing. Okay, after you do this, um, you are ready to test the setup. Now, I saw some comments as well of you asking, how can you create um, uh, a Java project? So I suggest to use Maven or Gradle and what they do very cool so i have here the documentation of maven what they do very cool is that they also can manage dependencies easily in a similar way that lazy does and mason does maven and gradle can also do it's like similar with npm if you have some knowledge in web development where you can install libraries from the npm uh, install and then the name of the library here is kind of similar. You have a POM file where you can put the dependencies and you install the dependencies and all that stuff. This is the best way. And if you see in in the um, in the plugin that we just configured, the root here, which is kind of uh, you are going to specify all you should find the 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 root directory. You see that it has dot cradle devil dot kit and dot mv and w. Either the first one and the last one, it's either Gradle or Maven. Uh, the middle one is that trying to find a Git repository. So this is how it's going to find. So I suggest you to create a new project either with Maven or with Gradle. For this one, we are going to test it with Spring Initializer. Spring and Spring Boot is kind of uh, maybe the best framework for web development in Java. So you can create web applications. In this case, I'm just uh, downloading it with a version 17 and with Maven, just to have a Maven out of the box and quickly to be quickly used. There will be no dependencies in that. It's just for testing purpose. And we can try it out. Um, okay. So if we go to the demo, so I have here, I've just, generated the, um, the, the, the the project and I have it in here. So as you can see, I have the MVNW. So this is kind of um, the, um, 
the the Maven uh, script that will roll and we it will uh, look to the palm and install the dependencies and all that. So we are going to test it. So I'm going to find the Java file. I'm going to open. It will load the FTP plugin and we saw in here service ready. It it indexed the project. The service is ready. So when I click it to the this demo application Java, it went to that to this. FT plugin, it looked at it, so I have a java.lua file, so it, it, it triggers, it will uh, require the JDTLS and it will load up this config and it will hold this and if we see the LSP info, which is kind of see what are the LSPs that I touch, we see that we have the JDTLS, don't mind about auto start files, this is because since it's not LSP that is managing but it's kind of an external plugin that it's telling uh, LSP look I'm managing JDTLS I need you to do your own thing but I'm gonna also do my own thing so JDTLS is not auto starting but uh, um, sorry the NeoVim LSP is not auto starting but JDTLS is and that's why it says false because this is um, this board it, it, it's kind of uh, information about the NeoVim LSP and now if you want to test it, I can do this. We also we already have auto completion. It's saying most of the stuff that we have. And if we do right run and that dot, we have auto completion with all of the methods that we can use and fields and all of that stuff. And even if I do like, if I try to do something like this, yeah, as you can see, it gives me, it's, it's giving us, Auto completion and all of that stuff. I can try to do this string test equal new string. It's already saying that we can do a function test and then I can do test dot linked notify turn hash code is empty. So yeah, as you can see, it's working already. And as you can also see, it's compared with the last version, it's, it's way easier. Uh, they made a big refactoring and they optimized it a lot. So now it's it's way way easier. And yeah, we reached the end of of the video. I want to thank you again for all of the kind words. From now on, just let me know in the comments which which are the ideas or the videos that that you would like me to build, like explaining whatever you want, follow structure, some stuff. Uh, about Vim, um, I will try to do my best to do a video to explain that and to teach you. Um, and yeah, one important thing: hit the subscribe. It's really important for 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 guys like me that are starting now and are they are small to to build my own community and to start grow so that I can do more content and more content and so that I can help you more. Uh, I really love Vim and I would like to to help a lot of you guys that are starting now. The learning curve is kind of big. So yeah, I hope you have liked this comment and uh, yeah, just subscribe and I hope you have an amazing rest of the week and I see you on the next video. Goodbye guys. Thanks.